In this video, we'll continue our study of statistics as we look at measures of dispersion. Specifically, we're going to be looking at standard deviation and range. Now, dispersion has to do with how the data in a set of data is spread out. So measures of dispersion are used to measure the variability of the data, including the spread of the data, and how the data vary about the mean. The range and standard deviation are the measures of dispersion that we're going to be looking at in this section. To start with, we'll look at range. Range is the difference between the highest and lowest values. It indicates the total spread of the data. You could think of it as uh, where the data ranges from, from here to here. And we're going to look at how big that range is, how big the spread is from the lowest to the highest. So simply put, it's just the difference, or in other words, you subtract the lowest value from the highest value to get the range. So of our two measures of dispersion that we're going to be looking at, Range is by far the easiest of the two. Again, all we're going to do is subtract the biggest number minus the smallest number. Standard deviation, as you can see here, has a little bit more complicated formula. But even though the formula is complicated, don't let it scare you off. By using a very specific procedure, it's quite easy to calculate the standard deviation. I, I would encourage you to use this process that we're going to look at and even to get in the habit of using a specific chart. You could build the chart in a Word document uh, or, or any other platform, and I think that, that you'll find that pretty helpful. Let's look at an example here of sugar and cereal. Determine the range and the standard deviation of the following numbers of grams of sugar and select cereal. The first step that I took as I'm looking at these different uh, data points is I have put the numbers in order. So you can see they were listed as 13, 6, 15, 2, 14, and so on. I simply rewrote them, putting them in order starting with the lowest, ending with the highest. And to find the range, what I'll do is I'll subtract the zero from the 20, and that gives us a range of 20 minus zero or 20. So we can calculate that the range of this set of numbers is 20. Here in the top right corner, you'll see a list of steps you could use, the procedure you could follow to determine the standard deviation. And you'll see that as the formula would lead us to already recognize, this set of steps is a lot more complicated than the range, but it's still very doable. So don't be thrown out by how complicated it may look. The first step is to simply determine the mean. And remember, x bar is simply the sum of all the x's divided by how many pieces of data there are. So when we calculate the mean, here we're, we're going to add up the 0 plus 2 plus 6, add all of these up. And when I added these, I got 90. And then I saw that there were 9 numbers, so I divided by 9, and that gives us the mean of 10. So one step is done. Next I'm going to make this chart where the columns have data, data minus the mean, and then the data minus mean squared because this numerator is asking us to find the sum of all the uh, x minus x bars squared. So doing that with a chart is often easier than doing it simply from a list of numbers. Here's the chart. I've already determined that the mean, the x bar is 10. So when I do 0 minus 10, I get negative 10. 2 minus 10, 
6 minus 10, 6 minus 10. And then once I hit 13, I'm getting to a place where the numbers are positive, 13 minus 10, and so on. So each of these values in this first step of the chart is just the x minus the mean, the x bar. Next, I'm going to square each of those numbers. It's negative 10 squared, so negative 10 times negative 10, negative 8 times negative 8, and so on. So what you'll see is that these are all going to now be positive. After I square each term, I'm going to find the sum. I'm going to do the summation, so add them all up. When I added up the list, I've gotten 362. And you can see that we're on step six now. The next step is to apply the formula. So we're going to put our sum in the numerator, and we're going to divide that by n minus 1. n is equal to 9 because, as you see over here and we count the number of numbers, there were 9 x's from 0 to 20. So we're going to do 362 divided by 8, and that number is uh, 45 and 25 hundredths. Square root it, and we've got our standard deviation. I'm going to round that to two decimal places, and that gives us an approximate standard deviation of 6 and 73 hundredths. Let's look now at what that standard deviation is actually telling us. What does the standard deviation tell us? When I make a number line segment, a number segment here, and I put each of the data points on that segment in its respective location. I've got a, a zero, I've got a two, I've got two sixes, a 13, uh, two 14s and a 15 and a 20, we're looking at how far are these numbers spread out from the mean. Now our mean was 10, and this it's also the median, but our mean, or the x bar, is 10. So we're looking at how far spread out are these pieces of data from the mean. And we can see that it's pretty spread out. So that 6 and 73 hundredths is, uh, is a little bit bigger than we see in some of the other examples in our textbook. But that's standard deviation. I hope that this video has helped you walk through the process. If you do have questions, please don't hesitate to contact me and I'd be happy to assist you further.